How's it going? Welcome back to the channel. If you guys are a fan of eight turbos on a V8 with five exhaust pipes because we blew three of them off doing a two-step practice last video, then uh, make sure you subscribe to the channel because you're not going to miss what we have coming on, upcoming in the future built. We're definitely going to have to address our uh, tack welding situation here because you can see the tacks just didn't really penetrate into the cast and then they kind of snapped off. Um, so obviously fully welding would prevent that issue. We also have one of the biggest, baddest blow up valves you've ever seen in your life. And it's been sitting in the garage for probably like two years. It was part of the old Mocula build that just never got used. So I'm thinking if we plant that right there, that's going to be pretty badass, isn't it? So let's uh, try and cut up a piece of, I believe this is two and a half inch pipe. Let's see if we can weld this thing on there. That'd be pretty cool, right? I lied! That thing is a three inch pipe. So this is three inch. Oh my lordy. That is uh, large. So how do I make a three inch into a three inch here? I need, I need a hole saw. And to be completely honest, I don't know the best way to do this. So I'm gonna do it the best way that I know how to do it. And that's how to not to do it completely at all. And uh, that didn't make any sense to me or anybody else. This is why I don't mount my base. So I can just transport it wherever I want. It's not working out as planned because the vice doesn't hold it very good. I didn't really think that's true because now we have a hole but no matching hole on the other side. So now we got to guesstimate at that hole. I mean, this is kind of what we're left with. Let's just get a three inch pipe and see if it, it does a thing. It looks to be super the wrong angle as well. Let's just uh, attempt to use this to clean up a little bit. Simple. We also clamped it to a steel three inch V-band, that way it wouldn't warp the aluminum because it's just an aluminum little V-band. And if you welded this side without a clamp on it, it would probably uh, warp the whole flange. And you don't want that because it's only O-ring together on this side. But, I mean, this is probably extremely hot, but somewhere in that general area. <laughs> That's gonna look so cool. Maybe we'll try and line it up right with that intake manifold and uh, between all the runners here Now we're gonna tack weld it on the car exactly right here because this is where I want it But you'll notice I don't cut my hole out in the middle first I usually cut the hole out after I've got the thing welded um, And that's because if you cut the hole out and you misalign it a little bit then you have to try and fill a hole Whereas if you weld it first and then drill your hole you won't blow holes through it because there's you're just like uh welding to two pieces of metal instead of trying to weld around a hole. I ended up making this super cool reinforcement plate on the front and it definitely wasn't because that I accidentally drilled through the side of this pipe with a hole saw by accident. It definitely wasn't because of that. But uh, I mean, it looks pretty cool now and it, it works. So we'll put it on there and put the blow off valve and see if it works. Also, I can't bead roll it because I lost my bead rolling pliers. I don't know where they are. They're lost in this mess somewhere. Oh, that was a good poopy. Dang, that looks pretty cool on there, I think. Uh, conveniently, this kit came with a uh, 3 8, I believe. MPT, no, it's a quarter. Quarter MPT push lock fitting kit. And conveniently for us, we actually have a uh, quarter MPT plug right here so we can come off that right into the top here. 
Uh, one thing I didn't do is this was set up for a uh, blower car, so it might uh, be running open to atmosphere at vacuum, in which case we should uh, probably get a different spring or something in there. There, all plumbed in. I mean, technically, even though we're missing these exhausts, they'll just blow at each other anyways. We can try and start this. was open the whole time which means it was in like bypass mode I believe so I don't know if we have another spring for this or not and I don't know where the kit is for it honestly I'm just gonna go ahead and take the top part of this off someone's gonna laugh at me because they they know what they're doing and I don't know what I'm doing but I'm gonna take this top part off and see uh, what's underneath The irony is when you need an Allen key to tighten your Allen keys, the Allen keys are on the Allen keys. And watch, it's not going to be a metric one either. Oh, maybe. It's a weird predicament. What the? Did it get the whole valve out? How you just get the top half off then? Oh, okay. Oh. Uh and we go ahead and pull the piston part out, you can see that the, this piece is stationary because it's bolted to the Pro Charger valve and this piece actually pushes in on that spring. So essentially what we need is to be able to adjust that spring or uh, somehow get a uh, stiffer spring in this area right here. So maybe try and pull this apart and see if we can get a different spring, maybe like a wastegate spring that's a bit uh, tougher than that one. I've got a Black Sheep Industries wastegate spring and this spring and it feels a little bit tighter. It looks like uh, it's actually bigger in diameter. So we're gonna give this one a go, put that in there, fits in there. And then uh, this piece kind of just goes back in. There's probably an easier way to test this. And I'm gonna try and do it with this vacuum gauge um, to see how many inches of mercury it takes to open that thing up. And if it's roughly like 14, then that means the engine will pull it open. So let's see. We're barely at five and it's already all the way open there. So the engine probably pulls 10 uh, inches of vacuum. Well, it's not inches of vacuum, it's like inches of mercury on idle. So it's it would be all the way open. All right, before I go too far, what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try and put a spring in this top part right here. Um, and just let it rest on the top there and see if adding a spring on top of the diaphragm is gonna help instead of trying to stack two springs in the bottom part. Like we'll just add this spring in here for now, it kinda, I don't know, seats in there pretty good. We're gonna have to press down on that pretty hard to get it to seat, I think. Try our little test here again, mind the heater because it is minus balls outside right now. Okay, we're up past five, it didn't open yet. Losing pressure because it's not tight. That's what she said. Uh, it's open right around 10, so we might need another stiffer spring. It doesn't open all the way anymore though, because the spring... Uh, the spring must be collapsing too much in the top here. The springs that I've been using in there are for a 44mm uh, gate, so the piston inside the gate is actually smaller, but the spring here I have is for a 60mm gate with a bigger piston, um, so it'll be much uh, more suited for something like this. So we're gonna pull that out, cut a piece off that one, put that one back in and redo our test and it should be a little bit better because the piston in the 60 mil is much more comparable to the piston inside this. Instead of just sandwich one giant spring in the bottom, uh, we'll test that out first. This is like a eight PSI spring on a 60 millimeter gate, so I'm hoping it works. This time it's right around 10 when it starts to open. So we'll probably give it a try there. I think before we get too far, 
Damn, this heater is annoying. But it's so cold out. Before we get too far, I think we're gonna address our turbo oil return lines. Um, I feel like our tank is just gonna be too high where it is and we're not gonna get a good angle on our returns. So I might end up having to build another tank and like drop it down here or just like redo this tank and put it down here somewhere, somewhere lower. That way we can get some gravity drain and then somehow mount our rail somewhere too because they're just kind of hanging here. It's been a predicament, but it's just me and my stupid brain overthinking things probably because it probably runs fine the way it is. I just want to redo it because I want it to be good. Over here, I kind of want to put the rails like this. Just leave them in the valley there and then run hoses from uh, the turbos down into the valley. And then cut this off somewhere like right here. But I think I want to cut this piece out as well. Um, our Maven mount. This has to be remade because this Maven mount didn't work with our current turbo. Um, so well, I want to cut this piece out right here. And then make another bar that goes across and mount our tank way lower than it was. And then we won't run into the draining issues that we were having because everything would be a downward flow. Okay, I think I have a solution to our problem here. You can see that our rail, we built it with a 13 degree angle and that was when we had it at a 13 degree angle directly underneath. But if we put it here, we no longer want our 13 degree angle, we just want to go in straight. So now our 13 degree angle is throwing us off. But what I think I've come up with is, I'm gonna use a piece of the schedule one, one inch schedule 10 stainless and it's thick enough that we can tap it. So I tapped it for a 3 8 fitting with a 5 8 barb on it, which is exactly what's on the turbo side. And if we do that along the whole thing, it'll work perfect. Um, there's enough threads in there that uh, we can get that to seal, but if I can get some steel fittings, we can also weld them in there. And then this can be, out of the way. This can be put in that place. It can go exactly like this. They can just go sideways into this pipe. It'll drain down towards the front here. Um, and then we'll have to modify this thing again. And we also have a steel one inch barb that we can just like cut off right here and weld into the end of this pipe as well. And that'll be our uh, new rail system. Some cheap plates, some cheap hose, and some cheap fittings to try this out again. I bought a bunch of our oil feed fittings. What we're gonna do is we're gonna weld up the backside, drill a small hole in them, make restrictors for the turbos. And then these are the ones we got for our pipe. They are brass, but the ones inside the turbos, those ones are steel. So what I might do is take the turbos off, replace all of the brass ones with the steel ones. We can use these for our steel pipe and get them welded in. And then the oil restrictors are actually gonna fit right here. I have a feeling that these little turbos were never made to have a big 4A end line going into them, uh, especially at 50 PSI. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna restrict it a little bit, uh, restrict the flow to the turbo a little tiny bit more than it is. And hopefully that uh, helps cure our uh, blowing oil through the front problem here. We do have the same turbos on the four turbo Honda Civic and I did restrict the oil flow to those ones and those ones ran flawlessly for a really long time uh, without blowing oil through them. So 
We'll try and restrict them. I might even order a couple more turbos just to have on hand because they were so cheap in case one blows up and we need it right away instead of waiting three weeks to get them. So having like an extra four turbos on hand wouldn't be a bad idea. Well, here's our new plan coming together. To me, this looks way cleaner than the last setup for sure. Um, we actually made a little bracket right here on the bottom, you can see, to hold that pipe up. That still needs to be fully welded, but I mean, cut these off right here and you put the fitting on the end and slant it at a decent angle, probably like 10 degrees or so. Enough to gravity drain oil, because that's a pretty high volume pipe compared to the last one we had there as well. But to me, it looks like it's gonna look fairly well. And I don't like doing things two times, but in order to improve them, you kind of have to do them in steps. That's kind of how every manufacturer goes. They do like a, a Gen 1, a Gen 2, Gen 3, and they keep improving every time. So I'm just like a big manufacturer, basically. Yep. Whoa, it's been taken apart again, and I've enlisted the help of Miss Alien Trash Kitty on all medias. <laughs> See that? I was yes. winking with both eyes there. I've enlisted you to attempt to help to weld for me, please. Yes. We need to weld these V-bands on. Uh, as you can see, some of them broke off um, when we were doing two steps. And then uh, some of them aren't broken off. So we just have to weld them all on. I mean, you were, you did do tattooing at one point, so yes. you got a steady hand. And you beat Tokyo in the weld off at one point as well. Yes. So I mean... We'll get the basics down here and then uh, I'll let you... Have at it, because I definitely need a hand welding. So you dip, move, dip, move, dip, move. Does that make sense? <laughs> I'm so weirdly nervous right now. Replicate this piece of 
pipe instead. So Gina's gonna take some long length of pipe, which uh, she's not used to handling because, you know, we have not it over pipe here. this big anyways. Um, she's gonna replicate our oil drain pipe. I gave her the directions, she's just gonna handle that. I'm gonna weld up the turbos. Directions. I gave you directions-ish. And I'm gonna, oops. And I'm gonna weld up the flanges, so we'll be back in a bit with uh, two completed projects at one time because I've got a helper now. Thanks for being free help. Free? You're painting. So she's got her pipe already drilled out, and I've only got four turbos welded. You did more than what I did. I just struggled with the fact that you don't have a proper setup. Like, you should have a, at least a vice on your f***ing drill. Yeah, she's mad because we do a ghetto around here, Yeah. and we use a C-clamp to hold the drill press in place. No, the C-clamp doesn't hold the drill press. The C-clamp is just a resting point for when you go like this. Yeah. And you just hold it so it doesn't go She'd anywhere. She'd be mad that we don't have a vice for the I'm mad because, not mad, I'm not mad. I'm used to doing things where if you had a vice and I could just slide the pipe along and it's precision. Now it's like these holes because I have to hold it and it's pulling it. It's probably not perfectly perfect. perfectly the way that I Welcome would do to the it. Lifestyle, bro. <laughs> Yes, we'll be back in the garage tomorrow, but we've got an outro V out, so thank V for stopping by because this is pretty awesome when she helps out. And uh, I mean, even if that took you like an hour to do it, it took me an hour to do it, and instead of me taking an hour to do it, you took an hour to do it, so now I don't have to do it. I think it only took me that long because, like I said, you set up is sketchy. <laughs> it's sketchy. So. But uh, I'm going to finish welding up the rest of these turbos. She's got some errands to run, so I'll see you guys in a little bit. There we have it. All eight turbos are welded up. We might have to call this episode like one step forward, two steps back episode because this is clearly not how we left it last time. We're ahead on the Pro Charger. Now all our exhausts are fixed. So everything's going to be better once we put it back together. And then our oil drain tube, we'll finish that next time we come back out in the garage. I do have a bunch more welding because we have to weld up um, that other tube with the nipples in it. <laughs> uh, childish. But... Uh, yeah, I'm going to go inside. I have a feeling this one's going to be a long one to edit. So make sure you guys subscribe to the channel. I know we didn't make huge headway on this episode, but uh, I appreciate you guys stopping by. So peace easy. Get that V.